All right, continuing on from where we left off. Last time we added the servlet context uh, stuff to allow Jetty to host some of our uh, application files and eventually our uh, application itself. Uh, so before we go on, let's go ahead and do a Maven clean install. Uh, we messed around with our dependencies and things, added a couple, and so we're likely gonna have problems with our uh, dependency yeah, convergence. And probably also, uh, if I uh, do enforcer.skip to temporarily disable the enforcer plugin, I suspect we'll also have dependency issues, meaning some that we've uh, added that we're not using and some that we are. Okay, yeah, so we definitely are. Now, I, I originally added Jetty Web App thinking that we were gonna use that. We're not actually using it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that one. And last time I added Jersey Container Servlet. Um, it looks like I'm actually using code from Jersey Container Servlet Core. So I added that so that we could get the Servlet Container class. And if I, uh, if I look at the details here, yeah, I can see that that class is actually coming from Jersey Container Servlet Core, not Jersey Container Servlet, like I, I thought. So let me go ahead and update this to use the core one. And the last one that's left is actually Jersey server. I thought we needed that. Uh, it turns out we're not actually using it, so I'm gonna delete that one for now as well. Now, if I run this again, that hopefully will clean up all of our uh, dependency usage. Okay, so that fixed our dependency usage. Let's turn the enforcer back on and see what kind of enforcement issues we have with uh, dependency convergence problems. Okay, we've got a few here. Uh, or we've got one problem in particular. We've got this Jakarta inject API, sometimes using 2.0.0 RC2, sometimes using 2.0, 2.0, 2.0, 2.0. So it looks like this one is the problem one. Uh, it's marked as provided here. It's using a release candidate of the real uh, released 2.0.0. So really, uh, if we exclude this one and keep 2.0.0, then we'd be good. So let's find where these are coming from. So uh, this first one is coming from Jetty Annotations. And then this one's coming from Jersey Container Servlet, Jersey Container Servlet, Jersey Container Servlet, and Jersey Container Servlet. So basically all we have to do is exclude this dependency from Jetty annotations, and we should be good. So we already have one exclusion. Let's add another. All right, so last time we excluded Jakarta annotations, and then we had to add in our, our own version to fix that self-convergence issue. Uh, but in this case, we have a newer version from Jersey Container Servlet Core. So we're gonna use the, the newer one from Jersey Container Servlet Core instead of our old one, uh, or the old one from Jetty Annotations. So I'll go ahead and notate that here. So that at least clarifies why we specified these exclusions in here. So now if I go ahead and rebuild, hopefully that fixes our convergence problems. Okay, so now everything's looking good. Uh, in fact, uh, I, well, I still have this to-do in here, so I'm not sure if the server will actually start or not. It might start and then just only fail if I try to hit a, a slash API using curl. So yeah, it does start up and everything. Uh, so because it starts and because the build is successful, I'm gonna go ahead and push these changes up. Let's uh, make sure what we're pushing makes sense. So yeah, we've got our dependency updates in these palms and some plugin updates. We've got our server updates, which adds, uh, adds our logging back, adds or removes the date header and then adds the servlet stuff. 
Now we've got our eight simple HTML file. So these changes look good. Now I'm kind of being sloppy here, right? I've, I'm just committing everything that's changed, even though there are changes of different types in here, uh, which is a, okay if, just because I'm the only one working on this project. But uh, if this was work, I would split this into two separate commits. I, in fact, maybe I should do that just to, to demonstrate. So I'm going to restore everything that we had staged. Now if I get status, everything is you know yellow and red. So what I'll do is I'll do two separate commits, one for the dependency updates and then one for the server updates. So if I do uh, git add-p, dash p means patch. So this allows me to pick and choose what uh, changes I want in uh, each commit. So I guess for the first commit, I'll do uh, palm updates for the dependencies and the plugins. So I'll go ahead and add this one because that is a, a dependency update. So I'm going to type yes here to stage this particular uh, chunk of changes. I could choose no to skip this one, uh, or I could type S to split, although I don't see S uh, as an option here, uh, probably because all the changes are all together in one. So just type yes here. I want the Jersey bomb as well. I'll go ahead and do this, uh, these ignores. Here's this big plugin update, so I'll do that one. Here's more plugins, more plugins. Okay, and here's uh, the dependencies in the uh, tutorial API server, Palm. So I'll do yes there. Sorry, my phone's going crazy. Uh, okay, I'll type yes for there. Okay, so now we're into the tutorial API server. So I'm gonna say no to these. And we'll save those for the next commit. Okay, so now if I do git status, I can see we've added our palms and we've uh, kept our other changes separate. Now, in, in this case, I could have just done git add on these individual files and then done a commit and then git add on these files and done a commit. Uh, but often uh, git patch or git add dash p is more useful for teasing apart the individual changes, like especially if I had changes in this one file that should go into two separate commits. Okay, so now that I've done the add, I can do git commit dash m. And I can add everything else in a separate commit. And I can put I can push both commits or origin main. I can push both of those commits up to GitHub. Okay, so now we're all pushed up. Everything's committed. I can stop the server and close it. All right, so where we left off, we started this application. We just stuck a to-do in there or a toto, and we need to uh, basically create that application inside of our REST module. So let's go ahead and do a new directory. We need some Java code, so I'm going to create the source main Java. Then in here I'll do new package, and we'll do com.tutorialapi.rest. So we'll put our application in here. I'll go ahead and close these palms for now. So we'll say new. Um, now, this is our API server holder, and this is our application that's going to host our API. So I'm going to call it API application. And this is going to extend resource config. Now, resource config is a Jetty, excuse me, a, a Jersey class that we haven't imported. Oh, well, actually, uh, so here's the Jersey server dependency that I added last time. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm gonna click this to add that dependency into our palm here. Um, it put it in a weird place, so I'm gonna fix that and move it 
down here. And otherwise this looks pretty good. It doesn't specify a version because we have version up in our dependency management section. Uh, so yeah, this looks good. Now what we're gonna do is create a new construct uh, constructor and tell it the packages where it should scan looking for classes with annotations on them that provide our resources. So I can do com.tutorialapi.rest. So basically scan this package for any resources. Um, I've hard coded this string here. Uh, probably a more elegant way would be to do API application dot class dot get package name. So that way if I drag and drop this class somewhere else, it will automatically uh, you know, keep track of what this package is for me, probably. So maybe a you know, pros and cons of both approaches, but I guess I'll do it this way for now. Okay, so we have our application. Let's go ahead and create a resource package. And we'll create a test resource. So we'll give it a path of, I'll just say, test and we'll have a, a we'll support a get method for this rest endpoint we'll not consume anything but we'll produce say application JSON actually I'll just do text plain for now I think I should be able to import this yeah here's a, a Jakarta WS media type so I'll do public String test return hello. Okay, so we've got a test resource. If I curl and hit slash test inside of slash API, which is where our API application is hosted from our tutorial server, right? So it'll be slash API slash test. Then I should get this hello uh, word back. Okay, so uh, we've created these classes that are in tutorial API REST. However, over here in the server, I need to specify our API application. Now this API application isn't actually on the class path, it's in a different module. So what we need to do is include our tutorial API REST module as a dependency in our tutorial API server Palm. So if I open up the Palm here, come up to the top, I'll do project.groupid and then I'll say tutorial API server REST. Okay, now, if I run this as is, I haven't specified a version here, and I don't have that dependency up here in my dependency management. So I should get a complaint that the version for that dependency isn't recognized. So what I need to do is just like our other dependencies, go ahead and define this dependency up in dependency management and add a version of project.version project.version of course comes from right here. So now if I build, it should rec recognize everything just fine. And come over here, and once I do my Maven rebuild, yeah, okay, well it is, it's complaining that we're, we're using a jar that we haven't defined, I'll fix that in a minute. So let me do a Maven reload project. Okay, so now it picked up our API application from up here in our tutorial API REST. Um, so up up in our test resource, we were using Jakarta.ws classes, and this is complaining that we're using Jakarta.ws classes, but we haven't defined Jakarta.ws RS, RS API as a dependency. So let's go ahead and add that as a dependency.
And since we're defining it in a lower level palm, we need to come back up to our uh, top level palm and add it with version information. So this is Jakarta WS, so we'll put it right here. Let's actually look and see what the most recent version of that is. What was it? Okay, so the newest version is 3.0.0. That's exactly the version that it complained about. Okay, so now I can do this build here. All right, everything built successfully. All of our dependencies are looking good. All of our uh, code is looking good. It's gray, meaning that we're not actually using it yet, but in theory, Jetty should use the uh, annotation scanner and recognize the uh, this path annotation and recognize this as a resource and automatically load it. So if I go ahead and run this Jetty server, if I rerun the previous curl and just hit the root, I should still get the HTML uh, content from index.html and if I type in uh, slash API slash test I get an error injection manager factory not found okay so uh, we've only partially initialized jetty uh, we haven't told it how to do uh, injection so dependency injection there's a few ways that we can do dependency injection. Um, Juice is one common way. Uh, Jersey usually uh, uses HK2. That's the Jersey built-in mechanism for dependency injection. So I'll go ahead and take a break here, and then the next time we'll come back and we'll fix this issue and make sure that we can curl our brand new test rest endpoint. All right, that's it for now. I'll see you next time.